waving goodbye to the people on the dock. Goodbye, people. We're going to see you in like 30 minutes. But first, if everybody could do a gentle jiggle to your side doors, just to make sure they're latched. Just a one. And then please don't lean on those doors as they are simply latched. They are not secured, okay? Please keep all arms, legs, limbs, body parts, also any equipment and children inside the, van, the, the tram at all times. That would be greatly appreciated. And if we could stay seated while we're moving, that would be also very helpful. I will make some stops so that you can stand and get some pictures. Okay? And very important, the very last thing, please look up to the ceiling in the last two cars, and you'll see a yellow strip across the ceiling. Please push that if you have a medical emergency, for a medical emergency only. And then those of you directly behind me, just flag me down or knock on the window. Okay? We got that business out of the way, so now let's go find some animals and have an adventure. To the right is where you'll find our cheetah. She might be out later. I heard that they were doing some cheetah runs this morning, so they are probably going to be coming back very tired. So you may see them relaxing when you come back. Let's go ahead and start out on the right. We're going to be coming up on, oh my goodness, this is awesome. On the right, we have a flamboyant of flamingos, and on the left, we have a herd of wildebeest. I'm going to move up a little bit so we can see on either side. This is so awesome. The wildebeest are rarely on this side, so the, the uh, weather might have something to do with it. Wildebeest are, from you know, as you may know, from the Lion King. They have synchronized birthing, so that means they have babies within the same two weeks, two to three weeks, to make sure that they're ready to go run the Serengeti. And then to the right, we have our flamboyance of flamingos. And these are greater flamingos. They're beautiful. They're a lot lighter in coloration than the um, Caribbean cousins. They live along. They live along the salt marshes of Africa. They have really long pink legs that they lay through the water. And a super long neck because they actually are bottom feeders. That means they feed off the floor. To the left, up beyond the wildebeest are Thompson's gazelles with those racing stripes. Thompson's gazelle. Are all right that was our roosevelt gazelle that's the number one food for cheetahs they go about 55 miles an hour she just goes 60 to 70, but they get tired out, and the Roosevelt Gazelle can have a lot of endurance and go much longer. Well, once again, I want to thank you for coming and seeing us today here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Just by coming here, you have actually come through one of our two front doors, being the San Diego Zoo Safari Park or our San Diego Zoo, our sister entity, where we hope to see all life thrive. And to do that, we have a lot of different projects all over the world, and many right here in our own backyard. I want to draw your attention to the right. Yeah, we see you see the uh, mule deer out there. That's actually a rhino exhibit that the mule deer just uh, cruising through. It's kind of funny. They live around here. But this is our Nikita Khan Rhino Rescue Center. The rhinos are actually out on the other side. They get rotated through. But I wanted to share with you the importance of the Makita Khan Rhino Rescue Center. And that is, we are hoping to help the northern white rhinoceros by having the southern white rhinoceros females there become surrogate moms. There are only two northern white rhinoceros left in the entire world. So it's a huge project that we are undertaking and hopefully we will be successful. Keep posted on our website keep, uh, to see what happens with that. We have had two successful artificial insemination births for southern white rhinoceros, so we're on the right track. To the left, one of my favorite birds. Look how big these guys are. 
These are nor these are great white pelicans, and the gray ones are called Dalmatian pelicans. Now they all work together. There's a lot on the uh, island as well. You also see those black birds, those black seabirds. Those are common cormorants. They're from around here. They're a local species. Now I point all these three out because they're like best buddies. They all work together to do their hunting. A lot of times the cormorants will dive deep under the water, pushing fish up from the bottom so that the, the pelicans, as they're swimming on the top, get a whole bunch of fish. They'll stick those great big um, bills down with their gooler pouch, open it up, fill it with fish, and swallow them whole. It's really amazing to see. So if you see any pelicans out there swimming, try to keep your eye on them just in case. They're going to get a big mouthful of fish. It's pretty awesome to watch the meat. When animals work together of different species like them, it's called a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic relationship is when different species work together to get their resources. Pretty cool. All right, let's continue on. We're going to make our way to South Africa. Off to the right, that's an off-exhibit area for our, our uh, family herd of Grubby zebra, you may have seen a few of them up on the top. Grubby zebra are very critically endangered. We've actually had 169, no, 129 grubby zebra foals born here. It's pretty amazing to help out with their SSP or PC survival plan. To the right, some more of my favorite birds. Look at them all lined up on the on the uh, wood, just again along the fence line there. These are vultures. The brown and white speckled ones are called the pelt griffith vultures, and the ones that look like they have a white kind of grayish feathers on the back, those are called cape um, cape vultures. These guys are so cool. They work together as well as a symbiotic relationship. They are the cleanup crew for the entire savanna. So they help keep all the other herds out there very healthy by eating all these carcasses and deceased animals or diseased animals. They help keep everybody else very healthy. We love vultures. Give me a thumbs up for vultures. Yeah, we love them. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on. To our right. Oh, looks like they're having a good time out here. These are Samarang's gazelle, all munching out, having some good morning breakfast snacks. Samarang gazelle actually live in a very harsh environment. Both males and females are going to have horns because they have to compete with each other to get their food, to get their resources. Kind of like if you put your dog this down and then you go to take it away and he growls at you. That's what these guys do with each other. Now, Samarang's gazelle have beautiful cryptic coloration. They blend in with the tan environment. And then their white bellies are actually going to reflect the heat so they can lay down and help cool their body temperatures. Beautiful Samarang's gazelle. Across the hillside, I think we'll see them better on the other side, but there's a nice alert circle of some sable antelope laying on the green belt out there. So that's a group of females. We call that a matriarch herd. They're out there with their babies. They have very long horns that lead down into their faces, looking like they have what we call a threat mask. We might get a closer look at them. A lot of antelope that have to compete with each other for their resources often will have a threat mass to look bigger, stronger, meaner, just be more threatening to their uh, opponent. To the left, we're going to check out our Maasai giraffe. This is actually a tower of giraffe. 
The rat can be spread out over a pretty large distance or territory because of their excellent eyesight. They can see in bigger areas and also because of their size. Now this is pretty awesome. Let me pull up here so we can talk about giraffes and also our ellipse and water buck. You may have noticed our male, he's just standing out there kind of in the center of everyone, very handsome. They stand about 18 feet tall. Look at his dark coloration, much darker than when we go to see the East African giraffe. 18 feet tall with an 18 inch long tongue and you can see the one under the tree reaching up and look at the tongue coming out to get the foliage in between. Notice too how well the, the uh, tree is all trimmed up. <laughs> Everything is perfectly coiffed thanks to our giraffe. And then right here at the, at the feeding bucket, a little uh, displacement happening. We have a lips and water buck. Everybody's kind of shoving the other person out of the way to get some food. That's pretty typical. Shaggy brown antelope, that's a group of females. Females don't have horns because they have, they live by water, so they have access to, uh, to resources. But did you notice their white elliptical ring on their hind end? That's called a follow me pattern. And that's really important for identification of, the, of each other as well as for those babies to be able to follow their mama. That was the ellipse and water buck, shaggy brown animals. Those shaggy coats are very oily because they live by water. They can go in the water and it acts as a wetsuit. To the right, we're going to see a beautiful lavender colored wild equine. These are called Somali's wild ass. Now, if you look at them, they are just gorgeous. Look at their legs. Notice their legs are all striped, kind of reminiscent of a zebra. And this is actually their follow me pattern for the Somali's wild ass so that their babies know where their mom is at also critically endangered due to the political unrest in Somalia. And also on the right, we have a handsome, handsome guy. This is Dune. Dune is our dromedary camel, just chilling out. Dromedary camels have one hump, and then that one hump, how many people think they store water? How many people think they store fat? Yes, they store fat in that hump, so that way they have some stuff to get by should they be in rough times. Across the way, check out our little baby following its mama. These are Cape Buffalo. Cape Buffalo are thought to be one of the fiercest animals in all of Africa. And you may not think it because they are bovines, member of the cattle group. But don't let that fool you. They are fierce, they are strong, they are ready to protect their family. Very protective of them, and they're very fearless. Laying down in a group just in front of the herd buffalo, look at those long horns on what they what we call the Gemsbach or Hemsbach oryx. Look at their masks on their face. One of the most beautiful oryxes or antelopes. I think. Those horns that they have are ridged and they're very long. They're about 44 inches in length, which is more than half the length of the chair, the bench that you were sitting on. Isn't that crazy? We're going to leave South Africa right now and head up our way to the forest. Looking down to the left, it's going to be hard, it's kind of tricky between the trees, but I did see Kendi, our male black rhinoceros, along with some young male kudos. We have one of our animal care staff out there. She's kind of checking everybody out. And you can see Aria. Aria is out there too. That's our southern, our black rhinoceros. As I creep up slowly, I can't stop on this hill, but I'll go slow. 
so that maybe you guys can get a nice shot of both the kudu and the black rhinoceros out there. Look at the kudu rub rubbing his head on Kendi's head. That's pretty funny. Black rhinoceros are also endangered. They're very different than the southern white rhinoceros in that they are slimmer. They're a mere 3,000 pounds compared to the four to 5,000 pounds of a southern white rhinoceros. They also like to live out in the forested areas, typically solitary. So they would like to live by themselves. Sometimes they might be for, with a mate for a bit or with their calf. Otherwise, they're pretty solitary. They are, once again, like all rhinos, endangered due to their horns. It's thought that by many cultures, the rhino horn has medicinal properties. It actually does not. If you feel the tip of your fingernails or even run your hands through your uh, hair, that is exactly what rhino horn is made up of. It's just keratin protein. If we broke down a tip of a rhino's horn, we could actually break it apart and it'll look like matted hair. Pretty amazing. All right, we are making it up this hill. We have forested areas on either side. To the right, I see our trumpeter swan playing down by the um, tree that's kind of second in along the water. Trumpeter swans are endangered. Look how beautiful they are. And I actually love when they are swimming because they're so graceful. They are endangered and we are hoping for, a, for some goslings from this pair. Also out here, let's see, where's everybody else at? They're all probably towards the back. It goes way back there. So let's keep moving so we can find more animals. Those were our trumpeter swans. Really beautiful, graceful birds. And we have a raven right here that just almost hit a truck. <laughs> there we go. Lots of indigenous animals around her as well. Species that are relative to this very endangered environment to our right. I want to call out this habitat to our right is called the chaparral or the uh, coastal sage scrub. One of the most endangered habitats in the entire world. We have about 900 or so acres here as a preserve. You'll see a lot of the rabbits and mule deer and crows and all that about making their home here. To the left, we're passing some roan antelope. This is a group of young males. We separated them from the females, which were on the other side of the bridge. Aren't they gorgeous? They look very similar to um, the sable antelope that we'll get a closer look at. Check out those masks on their face, those threat masks. Their horns, their horns are shorter than some of the other antelope, but nonetheless, they still utilize them in much the same way. Those were road antelope. Back to our coastal sage scrub. If you guys want to help out, maybe uh, plant some plants that are very drought tolerant, low for water. Use some of the plants that you see along here. Lots of different indigenous species that you can check out at many of the uh, local hardware stores to help do your planting. And then you'll also cut down on your water bill. To the left, we have a beautiful setting of some Uganda cob. Go here and take a picture of them and put it in grayscale because they look bright orange, right? And you think, wow, those are easy pickings for any predator. But if you take a picture in color and then put it in grayscale, it gives you a much more perspective of what a predator would see. Predators basically see in grayscale or black and white, so these animals won't stand out to them as much as you would think. Laying on a green hillside, they actually will blend in pretty good with the green grasses. Again, to the right, 
more on our habitat here, the chaparral. It's also home to such animals as the California condor, burrowing owls, and desert tortoises. All of those are critically endangered, and you can go check them out up at our Condor Ridge. Please do. The condors have an eight-foot wingspan. They're extremely majestic, so I think you'll enjoy catching up with them and seeing what the condors are all about. There was only 22 left in the wild back in the 80s, and we have released 1,000 back into their natural habitat. To the left, you can see some grubby zebras standing underneath the little, by the mushroom huts out there. Some more Uganda cob, and then of course, our Cape buffalo still hanging out down below. Grubby zebra, known for their black and white stripes. That's in the effort to help confuse a predator when they are being hunted. If you take your hands and you hold them up, and put one over the other and go back and forth, you'll see how you can't find one finger to the other. And that's how their stripes help them disappear or confuse the predator. To the left, we're going to check out springbok. Springbok are what we call the uh, chihuahuas of the... Uh, <laughs> of the savanna. Oh, look at the giraffe laying down too. This is kind of cool. Let me come up here a little bit. See if you guys can get a picture maybe just over that fence of the springbok and the giraffe all kind of hanging out. Pretty cool. Springbok are similar to Roosevelt's gazelle in that they are a favorite of the cheetah. However, they are not related to the cheetah at all. They're a completely different antelope. But like the cheap, uh, like the uh, Roosevelt gazelle, they can go 55 miles an hour or so, and out, out endurance. The cheetah, they can go. They're little marathon runners. That's a beautiful setting of the giraffe just kind of laying down, taking having a nice day out here. We're going to continue on. Off to the left, those are those beautiful sable antelope that we saw earlier. She's kind of in the center of this green belt. Again, this is a matriarch with a beautiful chocolate colored antelope. Look at the baby standing up. Mamas are all looking out in every direction to ensure their safety. To the right on top of the hill. I'm so happy to see these guys. Where have you been all my life? They keep hiding on me. These are scimitar horned oryx. Scimitar horned oryx were actually considered in, uh, extinct back in 2016, 2017. We've had almost 700 of them born here. Look at one of them. He's just looking at you guys. Like, I'm uh, checking you guys out. Alright, let's go ahead and head back towards East Africa. You might see the pelicans from this back end, those are some hunting. Also we're passing our water reclamation plant. We talk a lot about different uh, conservation efforts for animals and habitat, but please keep in mind your resources. Water is a big one, and with all the droughts, we've got to do all we can. Let's work together, everyone, to make sure we save our water. Not only will it save us in money, but we'll have water to make sure we can maintain ourselves. Do low landscaping, low water landscaping. Make sure you check your pipes for any leaks, get those fixed. And then the easy oil, turn the water off when you're brushing your teeth, shorter showers. All these things, if we do it together, oh my gosh, you guys, we will be making such a difference. It'll be awesome. I don't think so. Why is, why? Because the gate was closed by so well, I'm glad we got to see those wildebeest when they were up in the front because I don't see them anywhere. I'm 
not pretty typical. That's the beauty of all these real giant habitats that we have. Animals have the freedom to roam anywhere they want, just as they would in the wild. To the right, you can see some really pretty tri-colored, um, charcoal-colored gray cranes. These are actually called African, East African crown cranes. And what's really cool about them is they're all paired off. And every day, each pair does a courtship dance to make sure they keep their bond. Pretty awesome. They also have really cool haircuts on top of their heads so that they blend in with this pussy grass. Helps them camouflage when they're standing out in it. And here she is, our little princess, right in the center. I'll pull up here so you guys can get a beautiful picture of this little This is our East African giraffe tower, tower of giraffes. And there's our baby girl. I'm going to stop here so you guys can maybe shoot at an angle in without getting the trees. And then I'll move up again to see if you can get them between the trees. Look at that. That's pretty awesome, you guys. The two females with the baby right there and everybody standing around. Isn't that awesome? Look how beautiful she is. She's got little black stripes on the front of her knees all the way down her legs. Pretty cool. And it's great to see her with the Tower of Giraffe. A lot of times, she has identity issues. She'll be hanging out with the rhinos. That's funny. Alrighty. Alright, everybody. Well, I just want to call out. This is a great day. If you're hungry, just directly to the right above us. That's where the watering hole is. Uh, it's number 12, I think, on your map for restaurants. If you want to get a good bite to eat and then have a beautiful view of East Africa, I highly recommend it. You can check out all the animals out there. The rhinos are typically down that way, more in front of the watering hole, so you might get to see a crash of southern white rhinoceros off that way. To get there, just go to the right after you get out of the tram station. Go continue past the lions who are actually hanging out. And then continue to the right. There's also a point called Kalima Point that you can check them out as well. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great time out there with me on our tour. I had a great time sharing all the animals with you. Please wait till I come to a complete stop and then you can go ahead and let yourself out to the right. And please, everyone, have such a fantastic day. If you have any questions, don't just come up and ask me at the end of the dock. Have a good one. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh my God, this thing is so obvious. Oh, my God.